welcome to another budget traveler episode my name is Nahashon Daez right now I'm in a bus I'm heading to Lamu well, of course uh, we're going to find out two things again what is the cheapest place to sleep in Lamu like uh, the cheapest place I could find online to sleep in Lamu and number two we are just going to explore the town because I have never been to Lamu and I've really wanted to do this so I'll be able to tell you about this journey Unfortunately, Lamu has been one of those locations that has received a bad reputation because of terrorism attacks and kidnappings nearby. Uh, these are things that have, that have happened before and it has made the place, you know, people have been afraid to visit the place, yet it's probably one of the most beautiful locations you'll ever visit in Kenya. So uh, this is just a quick guide on how to travel to Lamu on a budget. It's 7.34 am and we are moving. So I'm going to divide this video into three parts. The first part will be getting there, how to get to Lamu. The second one will be accommodation and the third will be things to do and maybe afterthoughts. The bus I am on is called Mombasa Raha. The charge is uh, 1000 shillings. That is from Mombasa to Lamu. I have been in Mombasa for several days. So it has been easy just to connect and the seats are okay they look fine even though the bus itself is outside looks quite beat up the bus was okay the seats were fine they even reclined even though outside the bus looked very old but inside everything was just fine the journey from mombasa to lamu is a whole eight hours yes it's that far the distance is roughly 320 kilometers away you will know you have arrived when you see the end of the road and it's just water in front of you. The roads are good and accessible, so forget all the stories you've heard about the roads being bad. You can do a trip comfortably with any car, a Vitz, a Paso, a 4x4, whatever you have. And even if you're using public transport, it's perfectly okay. There are only a few stretches of Maram Road, which is flat anyway, and it's because the road is under construction, because of the Lamo port that is being built. So hopefully by December that road should be fine and the construction is not taking a big part. So it's roughly at most 30 kilometers, which is just a stretch of Maram Road. If you're planning a road trip, you can use the Nairobi Garissa route then down to Lamu, which will make for a very good road trip. Or the other option is using the normal Nairobi to Malindi, then from Malindi to Lamu. You can even make it more interesting using the Nairobi Malindi route, then you pass through Savo National Park. That should make for a very good road trip. While driving there, make sure you're driving safe because when you're approaching Garsen, there is a lot of crosswinds. So if you're driving fast, that can be very risky. Once you reach the end of the road, when you see water right in front of you, that's when you know you've reached Lamu. And from there, the only way to access Lamu is using a boat. So there are several boats outside. You can use the public boats which will charge you 150 shillings. And there are also private speed boats which average 1000 shillings. Well, if you're spending a lot, you can decide to do that, but it's not really necessary. The public boat is just fine and it takes almost 40 minutes, so it makes a very good fun ride. And here is the next part which is accommodation so i have been doing a series called the budget travel where i sleep in the cheapest hotels 
I can find online. And in this case, it's not different. I also did the same thing. I just arrived at the hotel, and the hotel is called Wild Beast Accommodation. So let me show you a tour of the room that I have, which is the cheapest that I got online from booking.com. I compared three websites, Jumia Travel, booking.com, and Airbnb. And so this is what I got the cheapest at 1,600 shillings for two days, that is two nights. And uh, let me show you how it looks. So this is the stairs coming up the room. Come this way. Then there's a sitting lounge here. You can chill. And this is the main door. That's the bed. It's a four by six. And the mattress is very comfy. Let me put on the lights. That's the bed. This is like a shelf. Don't worry what's happening here. That's my comp. And I just threw everything up here. There's a fan. That's a sink. And uh, there's the toilet. And the bathroom. Yeah, it has a shower. There's a mirror there for, you know, cleaning. And that's the street, the alley, coming to the hotel. Then uh, there's these steps going up, which uh, gives you access to the lounge, like a lounge, let's just call it a lounge. There's a seat. And there's a bed. So this is a place you can just come and relax. I love the table a lot. And this is the balcony. With some um, flowers which need watering. That's the alley. And there's the ocean. There it is. Unfortunately, I don't have an ocean front. But that's, that is not that bad. Yeah. That is Lamu. That's how it's looking. And so far, I'm loving it. And now, about things to do in Lamu. So, uh, just a brief history about Lamu. Like Lamo, I think, is one of those places in Kenya which still has that cultural vibe because the place is almost secluded, you can say. It's an island. The people there have preserved their culture a lot. And while walking inside Lamo, it's like a maze because there are no cars. So the air is so fresh and you feel like you're at peace in the place. The mode of transport is donkeys or motorbike because people have started to modernize. Being there is one of those things that makes you just appreciate being an African. The people there are very humbling and you can interact with them very well. There are so many benches just looking at the seafront. You can just sit there and have a chat with almost anyone and they'll be able to tell you nice stories about the place. The streets are very small and it's like there's an unwritten code of walking but at no point will you brush shoulders with anyone. Also remember, donkeys have right of way and always move if they are passing. While in Lamu, a few things that you can do. One, you can visit the donkey sanctuary. This is a place where they take donkeys that have maybe been tortured or maybe have had injuries and they try to treat them. While I was there, there was a donkey that had been attacked by a hyena that is from a, a neighboring island. So it was there to be treated. Apparently, animals can cross over, not to Lamu, but to the neighboring island, which is called Manda Island. Now, there are three islands when you go to Lamu. Lamu, the island, then there's Manda Island, and there is Pate Island. Manda Island is in the middle between Lamu and Pate Island. And it is also where there is uh, the Manda Airport. So when you're flying, let's say from Nairobi or from Mombasa, you will land to Manda Island, then you'll take a boat and cross over to Lamu. There's really nothing much to do in Manda Island. 
because there's just the airport but then there's also a side where there are people who stay so there are small villages there there are some hotels there there's even no electricity so what they usually use is just solar then Pate island has a lot of history because that is where the original descendants of lamu used to stay before they moved to lamu so there are ruins there called Pate ruins unfortunately i didn't manage to visit the place but that is something in the bucket list which I am going to do the next time I visit the area. One of the best things to do while in Lamu is boat rides. You can hire a boat or a, actually a door and use that door to go around all the three islands. And they'll also offer you food that is seafood which you can cook by the islands when you watch a sunset. It's a very good experience and it costs 2,500 shillings per person. And that is a trip that is going to take almost the entire day. So if you're a group, the cheaper it will become. And that is a bucket list that you should make sure you do when you're in Lamu. You can also do normal boat rides, which will cost you 500 shillings to 1,000 shillings. That is moving between Lamu and Shela. I'm going to Shela. And I have to walk because the border guy said that the water level is currently high. So, a border border can pass. Yeah, I can see footsteps here. So, I just have to walk around. There's a section you'll have to cross the ocean. Then you'll see the buildings, which look very nice. So, I came from that place. That is where most people are. Then I took a motorbike for like, I don't know, maybe two kilometers. Then I've been walking along this wall, heading to Shela, and I'm still walking. There are so many high-end hotels there, and the hotels are very expensive. They range at around almost 15,000 shillings per night. The beaches of Shela are very beautiful. They are pure white. The sand is very clean. There are no bottles. There is nothing literally like it's so clean and also the water is very clean the beach is also almost deserted like when you go there there's a good chance you'll be the only person there so you should visit the place chill by the beach take photos and all that kind of stuff street walks are one of those things which you will maybe be constantly doing there are so many corners in Lamb and it's almost hard to navigate the place but that is the interesting thing about it you just get lost, don't know where you're going, but just continue walking. One other thing you can do while taking a boat ride is visit the mangrove forest. There you'll be able to see how the mangrove forest grows. And if you're lucky and there is low tide, then you can also go right inside the forest and also see the crabs, those huge crabs which the locals catch. There's also a floating bar in Lamu, which when you're by the seafront, you can see it. So you can also get a boat ride to the place and enjoy some drinks or something. And that has been it for this Lamu episode. I hope to catch you soon. The next video will be doing Diani, where I was able to visit Diani for two days. And again, we'll, I'll also be able to tell you about the cheapest place to sleep in Diani and activities you can do in Diani. So until next time, bye.